Hey there, welcome to Procon Grey. For the few of you that have spent time on my channel, you know that I like technology. I've done a few videos on televisions, on music systems, on smartphones, on, well, not done one on a smartwatch, but I plan to. In fact, I was one of the early adopters of the Moto 360 first generation. And at some point, I probably will make a, a video on this other smartwatch that I own with a transflective screen. But that's a story for another day. This video is a little different. This video is not about smartwatches or cutting edge technology. It's, it's about my recently discovered interest in mechanical watches. Now, there are two things that I like about mechanical watches. One is the history of some of these brands that make mechanical watches, most famous of which is Rolex. The second is that calming sweep of the second hand that you get from mechanical watches, which is, which is very different to the ticking of a quartz crystal watch. And for those watches that have a skeletonized dial or a exhibition case back, the ability to look into the guts of the machine and see the parts move. It's very fascinating to me. I've spent many an evening down the YouTube rabbit hole of watch review videos. Most of those watches I can never afford. Now, one of my favorite watches of those watches that I can never afford is the Rolex GMT Master. Now, a quick history lesson first. The Rolex GMT Master was made or debuted way back in 1954 and was a collaboration between Rolex and Pan America Airlines. This was a time just after the war when transatlantic commercial flight was gaining popularity and the Pan Am pilots wanted a watch that would help them keep track of, of two time zones simultaneously. Now, Rolex wasn't the first company to come up with the GMT, uh, GMT watch, but in keeping with their character, they refined an existing design and came up with something that's just was pretty awesome and cutting edge for its time. In a lot of ways, Rolex was the apple of the watch world. But you know, that's a video for another time. So getting back to the GMT Master, by simply adding a fourth hand, that's the one marked in red you can see in this image, and having a 24, 24 hour marking on this rotatable bezel, the GMT Master was able to track two time zones simultaneously. In later versions, which I think was a GMT Master 2, you could independently adjust the, the fourth GMT hand, therefore technically allowing you to, to track three time zones simultaneously. The Rolex GMT Master then not only became the preferred tool watch of choice for Pan America pilots, but also became the watch of choice for the rich and affluent individuals traveling at that time. It was, and I think still is, one of the most recognizable watches in the world. And what's amazing is that in its 65 year or 65 plus year history, its overall design hasn't really changed much. Yes, the acrylic crystal was replaced with sapphire crystal. Yes, the original Bakelite bezel was changed for aluminum, which was then later changed to ceramic. Yes, the movement has seen a, a, a quite a few improvements, be it in terms of the quick set date feature, independently adjustable um, GMT hand, better power reserve. And yes, the case might have gotten a little bigger, the, the bracelet a little chunkier, stronger, the loom a little better. But really, just take a look at this image. The watch on the left, that's the GMT Master from 1955. And the watch on the right, that's the GMT Master 2 from 2018. Look, the, the big difference that probably pops out at you is the bracelet. The 2018 version has the Jubilee bracelet versus the original has the Oyster, but ignore that. Just look at the case itself. It's fundamentally the same watch. So we're talking about something that's stayed true to its origins over 65 years. Now, clearly I'm a fan of this watch. But like the many, 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 many people out there, I cannot afford one. So what's a guy got to do? Well, I bought a homage watch. I bought the Pagani Design GMT Pepsi. 
This watch is only 1% the price of the Rolex GMT Master. Does that mean it's only 1% as good as the Rolex GMT Master? Hmm. Let's see. Now I've taken a couple of parameters that seemed important to me. I'm not giving this too much thought. I just tried to do a fair comparison. Bear in mind, I have never felt or held the actual Rolex GMT Master 2 in hand. So all I'm basing this comparison on is from what I, I've read in, in reviews or seen on videos or images of the GMT Master 2. So it's going to be extremely subjective. Let's start with size and weight. Now the case on the Pagani design is, is made of stainless, stainless steel, similar to the uh, Rolex GMT Master. I'm sure the quality of stainless steel used in the Rolex must be far better than the Pagani design, but this seems good enough. The dimensions also are similar. I think the case might be a little fatter on the uh, Pagani design, but in size, it's about a 40 mm case. It, it weighs almost the same as a Rolex. I think this is about 156 grams. The Rolex is about 160. So I would say it's pretty much the same. So to give it a score on 10, I would say I would give the size and weight and dimensions of the watch a seven on 10. Next, let's look at build quality. The Pagani design has sapphire crystal glass, not just on the dial, but also on the Cyclops, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm sure the quality of sapphire crystal used on this can't be as good as the one on the Rolex, but honestly, I, I can't tell the difference. Now, I chose the Jubilee bracelet because it's a little more comfortable than the Oyster bracelet. O on overall inspection, it looks very similar to the Rolex. I can't really tell too much of a difference there. This watch also has something that the Rolex doesn't which is an exhibition case back. And they've done a decent job in decorating the movement and the rotor as well. So. so on build, I think I'll give it an eight on 10. I'm pretty happy with the build quality of this watch. Now, the next parameter, the movement. This is tough to really uh, comment about because I'm no expert. Now, from what I know, I think the Pagani beats at about six times a second versus the Rolex is about eight times a second. Honestly, with my eye, I don't think I can tell a difference. The power reserve is better on the Rolex. I think that gives about 50 hours power reserve, so this is about 36. But they're both automatic watches, so as long as you wear them, it shouldn't be an issue. Now, I don't have any specialist timing gear, so I can't talk about the accuracy as such. All I can say is I've had this watch now for a few days, and um, I've not noticed any issue in timekeeping. It seems correct right down to the minute. I, I can't speak to the seconds. But from reviews I've read online, people's mileage varies. For some folks, it's about plus or minus five seconds a day accuracy. For others, it's about plus or minus 20 or 30 seconds a day accuracy. So it really depends. And I think I need to look at this for a longer period of time to, to pass that judgment. So just because it has a slightly lower beat rate and a slightly lower power reserve, I'm going to give it a 6 on 10 for movement. Now, the last judging parameter I would say is looks. This is the most subjective of the lot. Now, to me, I kind of like the more vibrant colors on the aluminum bezel of the Pagani design versus the more muted colors of the, of the Rolex GMT Master 2. I know that ceramic and the process of of coloring that is far more complex. And a lot of technical know-how went into Rolex, so kudos to them for doing that. But just in terms of looks, I prefer the way the colors pop on the Pagani. The dial also I'd say is pretty neat, not too dissimilar from the Rolex. Um, they've also added a blue loom, which is kind of nice. The loom, however, is not great quality. It, it doesn't last long and it doesn't get very bright. The other, and I would say the biggest issue I have with the Pagani design is the Cyclops. The, the date window has way too high a magnification and it doesn't have any anti-reflective coating. So it picks up reflections no matter which way you look at it. I think the only way you can really tell the date is if you look at it head on. Any off-centered angle and it's just reflections and blurry image. So I, I really dislike that Cyclops. I'm going to take away some points from that. I guess finally, in terms of looks, I would probably give it a seven on 10. So adding up those four parameters, I would, I get about 28 points on 40, which works out to exactly 70%. So now again, uh, purely subjective, but 
I guess I could say that the Pagani design is 70% as good as the Rolex for about 1-2% to the price. Which seems like an incredible deal to reiterate again. I've not actually used the Rolex. I never held it. I, I don't know what it feels like. So purely, purely subjective. But at least looking at the Pagani design in isolation, I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, before I sign off, I must tell you about one issue that I had with the uh, with this watch. It's actually with the bracelet. You see the Jubilee bracelet? Ext extremely comfortable as it is, right? But the Jubilee bracelet has has these screw type pins which, which allow you to very easily unscrew and resize the bracelet to fit most wrists. The problem is these screw type pins are only across six of the links. So yeah, I was able to swap, remove those six links very easily, but when I wore the watch after removing those six links, it was still a bit too loose for me. And I like a watch that that's, well, fits fairly, not, not tight, but just firmly. So I needed, by my estimate, to remove two more links. But the problem was that there was no way to do that. There was no visible markings. There was no visible way to resize this watch. So I went online and did quite a bit of searching to try and figure out how does one resize these Jubilee bracelets once you've exhausted the resizable links. Honestly, I found almost nothing. Then I came across this one video where uh, this gentleman was taking apart a, uh, a a Jubilee bracelet to clean it. And he he obviously finished unscrewing those six removable links. I think it was six. I, don't, I didn't count for that particular one. But more importantly for the remaining, he actually used this custom tool. I don't know if it was his own design or what that tool is called. But that tool essentially clamped onto the corners of the five links on each on, on the bracelet and as he screwed it it pulled apart the links and that revealed to me that those links actually held together by two pins or, or rivet type pins and when he pulled them apart those those five links just came loose so that made me realize that there is a way to get this done all i need to do is find a way to pry apart these uh these links and then I could resize it. But I didn't have that tool. I, I didn't have anything that would resemble it. So here's the thing. I, I did a very crude uh, attempt. I took a pair of pliers and really started yanking at the uh, at the ends of the, of the links. It did give a little way. I was trying to pull and using brute force. And when I found a little bit of a gap, I poked a, a, a thin screwdriver in there and kind of hammered it in to create more space. And then between the hammering on the screwdriver as well as yanking the, the pliers apart, I was able to pull out the link. And these are the rivets that you're seeing here. So essentially, these rivets hold these five pieces together. And therefore, what I'm trying to say is that it's possible to completely open up and resize the Jubilee bracelet. It just does take a fair amount of work. Also be warned that in the at least the process that I use, which is the pliers and the screwdriver, it did scratch up the links. It didn't matter to me much because I was gonna, I wasn't gonna use those links anyway, so I was fine with it being a little scratched. Uh, and the rest of the watch is perfectly fine, so it wasn't an issue for me. But it's something that I want to call out for other people like me who have thin wrists. You can still resize a Jubilee bracelet, and I think it's worth it because of all the bracelets that I've worn on, on uh, watches, this is the most comfortable. So in summary, I'm really happy with this purchase. I will keep an eye on it and I will report back in case there's any issues that develop with this watch. So, so stay tuned to the space. And thank you for joining me down this history lesson and uh, bearing with me as I, as I share my uh, passion for this particular watch. On that note, this is Procon Grey signing off. See you soon.